Good morning, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. First up, New Hampshire getting nearly 689k to fight opiate epidemic. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Sharice LeClaire. going to be uh, money well spent. New Hampshire State Police will be putting nearly $700,000 to use, bolstering already existing programs like Operation Granite Hammer and Operation Granite Shield used to target dealers and traffickers. Because of those operations, state police have been able to glean much more intelligence and analytics. We take that data and obviously there's a need to examine it to further these investigations and hopefully uh, you know, do some damage to the, the drug dealers. The announcement coming from Attorney General Jeff Sessions in a press conference with DEA officials today. They announced a three-pronged approach to the nationwide crisis, $12 million in funding, a restructuring of the Drug Enforcement Agency, and we're learning all U.S. attorney offices will designate an opioid coordinator. Sessions saying the time is now, as data shows every nine minutes an American dies from a drug overdose. For Americans under the age of 50, drug overdoses are now the leading cause of death. This crisis is driven primarily by opioids. And Governor Chris Sununu was in Washington, D.C. today speaking with Vice President Mike Pence. He says he's grateful for the money, but wants New Hampshire to remain a priority in Washington, D.C. Every dollar helps, um, and uh, we hope more will come. And Governor Sununu said today he thinks this is a great first step in the process and hopes it adds on to law enforcement success fighting this problem. Live in the studio, I'm Sharice LeClaire, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that report. Started as a tax cut. Now it could change American life. The tax plan has been marketed by President Trump and Republican leaders as a Straightforward, if Ekmers rebatted for the masses of 1.5 trillion package to cut a sur hiring and economic growth, but as the bill has been rushed through Congress with Saint debate, it's far broader reflations have come into focus, revealing a catch hall legislative creative that could reshape major areas of American life from education to health care. Kushner met with special counsel earlier this month. Conversation focused on Flynn. Let's take a listen to the video from ABC News. Man, my sinuses. I think my head's in a fog. I mean, could you be any more dramatic? I've had it. I'm taking Mesonic Sinus Max. Eh, that stuff's all the same. This is different. It fights pressure, pain, and congestion. Hey, thank you. Those are my three best qualities. Get the straps. Carl, you know that I get car sick. Carl! Mesonic Sinus Max with a triple action formula that fights pain, congestion, and pressure. Start the relief. It's the misery. Let's end this. 
Next to the growing investigation into Russian meddling in the presidential election, we're hearing new details from a key participant at that 2016 Trump Tower meeting that's been under the microscope. This is the president's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, faces new questions from Senate investigators about WikiLeaks. ABC's David Wright is at the White House tonight with the latest. Tonight, the president's son and son-in-law both face new scrutiny as British publicist Rob Goldstone is finally breaking his silence about that infamous Trump Tower meeting with a Russian lawyer. It was Goldstone who emailed Donald Trump Jr. about dirt on Hillary Clinton from the Kremlin. If it's what you say, I love it, Don Jr. wrote back at the time. Goldstone, a flamboyant promoter who worked with Trump on the Miss Universe pageant in Moscow, now insists he was merely a useful idiot trying to help another client. I should have listened to that little voice in my head, he told the Sunday Times of London, adding, if I'm guilty of anything, and I hate the word guilty, it's hyping the message and going the extra mile for my clients. The Trump Tower meeting did happen, but all sides insist it was not as juicy as advertised. The president's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, is facing new scrutiny, too, about WikiLeaks, for one. WikiLeaks! I love WikiLeaks! This WikiLeaks is like a treasure trove! Investigators believe WikiLeaks acted as a conduit to leak Democratic emails hacked by the Russians. Last July, Kushner told Congress he had no contact with WikiLeaks. Mr. Kushner, how was your meeting? Nor did anyone he knew of at the campaign. And I have been fully transparent in providing all requested information. But the Senate Judiciary Committee says Kushner did receive emails about a WikiLeaks overture to Don Jr. back in September 2016. And he forwarded them on. Mr. Kushner has been very clear that he will cooperate as he has been voluntarily with all bipartisan requests from committees on anything that's relevant. He's done it and he'll do it again. Kushner now has until November the 27th to turn over Russia-related documents to Senate investigators. Tom? David, thank you. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that does it for the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. Goodbye, everyone.